Hey everybody, Avid Assistant here, and today we're going to talk about sound, or at least the sound tools available in Avid Media Composer. Um, and before we get along to the, the technical stuff um, to do with this particular application that I like to talk about so much on the interweb, I do want to stress how important sound is to a picture, because some people seem to have forgotten, most notably Christopher Nolan. He's a very, very brilliant filmmaker, made some really, really, really great stuff, but there's been some articles about Oppenheimer. I haven't seen it as of yet. I plan to very soon. But it seems like he's made the same mistake that he made during Tenet, which I did see, uh, where a lot of the dialogue was pretty inaudible. And uh, yeah, this, this just won't do. You can't have the audience not be able to hear the dialogue. Even if you think the film is told visually and through the pictures, the story is told, the characters are told, and you know, you're just looking at this beautiful cinematic masterpiece. But anyway, I'm about to go on a whole rant about this and, you know, I will save you that because all that's really going to lead to is a lot of editing work for me to cut that out. So instead, I'm going to cut to the point, you know, an introduction as to where all the audio and sound tools are within Avid. So here you'll see that my Avid workspace here, my view looks quite different to normal. Um, I've shuffled it around a bit to show um, a whole lot of sound tools which we'll use and play with here. Now, again, I'm an editor. I use sound for editing purposes. I'm no master in any of these tools. There's a lot of editors that I do know who are, do a much deeper dive than I do. I sort of learn things on a case-by-case -case basis as I need things. So I'm not gonna go too deep into things, else I'll just reflect how much I don't know but I will show you where all the tools are and it should give you enough knowledge, uh, foundational knowledge, um, in order to start playing with them yourself and get right into it. So first off, the most simple one here, we have the audio tool. And the audio tool in its you know, most basic function is a meter. So if I play back some sound, we get levels here. And it's definitely a good tool to have parked in your audio workspace so that you can get a good idea of the mix as things are, as you're playing down a cut, uh, particularly if you've already got um, uh, music and sound effects laid in with your production sound. This will, you know, help you to see the balance of where things are at. Generally about zero dB is where you want to be aiming for. Or if you just want to get a bit more simple, where it goes yellow. That's where you want it to be peaking and sort of sitting in general. So you want it to be just peeking into the yellow regularly. Now, this isn't just an audio meter. It does have some useful functions and tools as well. If you come up here and click on the pH that you can see on the right here, um, then we get some options. We can click on input or output to jump straight to our audio project setting setup. See, I'm not gonna get into uh, this window too much. You know, that this isn't one of your most common tools that you'll need to bother about probably, especially if you're an editor or an assistant. But up here, you've also got your peak hold and your infinite hold. Uh, we uh, can play some calibration tone. So if you just wanna test your speakers are working, so if you're not getting any sound, but you're seeing meters, you can do that which will allow you to play some calibration tone and then it'll just run until you stop it. And you can leave that running until you've got your speakers plugged in and working. As soon as you hear that tone, you'll know it's working. You can also set your reference levels here. You can set your calibration tone, like how loud you want that tone to play at. And you can actually create tone media here as well, uh, which is a function I've used many, 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 many times um, for doing my uh, two pips um, at the start of my ID board and leaders. I'll just create my tone here. You can set the level you want to create at, and we can set our tone frequency, our length. You know, by default it's 60 seconds, so you get a full minute of tone. Generally, I only really need a frame of it. Um, and the number of tracks, you know, you can have a, a tone with 64 tracks on it if you really wanted. Uh, the target bin it'll generate at and the drive. So say in my lock cut bin, if I wanted, you know, to create some stereo tone, so I'll go two tracks, set it to my RAID and I'll go, okay. And I'll go to my bins and there it is. It's made it there. So there you go, that's a very, very crude uh, explanation of the audio tool. It's the most simple um, tool in our audio arsenal here, uh, but uh, a very essential one. Next up, we have the audio EQ tool. I'm gonna to take this point to mention that almost all of these tools that I'm gonna talk about here, you can find under the tools menu and audio. Um, they're all grouped together in one section, and these will probably, for the most part, 
um, be mapped in your default audio workspace. But if you see any ones in this video that aren't mapped in your default audio workspace, there's where you can find them. So our audio EQ tool will look like this. This is where we can uh, mess around with the EQ of a particular sound. Uh, let's find some dialogue here. The organization comes before family. Yes, the organization comes before family. So here we have our low, our mids, and our highs. So I could drop the low shelf of this completely. Our blood. The organization comes before family. Drop the mids. The organization comes before family. Uh, I could drop the highs and just leave the mids. The organization comes before family. And we also have an EQ slider down the bottom to deal with the range of the EQ that we're talking about here. So I'll slide this all the way to the left. So we're just boosting up the low range, getting rid of everything else. But the organization comes before family. Almost sounds like he's talking through a microphone now. And we'll swing it the other way. And we'll see what the complete reverse sounds like. But the organization comes before family. Oh, he's really getting smothered there. But this isn't just a simple mixer for us to mess around with, you know, lows, mids and highs. There's much more we can do with this here. So I'm going to reset everything more or less to how it was. And let's take a look at some of these buttons that we've got going here. So it says a one up here because that's the track we're manipulating. It's going to, by default, uh, manipulate the highest audio track you have enabled where there is currently sound. So for me, I've got a one turned on some audio on A1. So that's what we're meddling with at the moment. But if I chose to, I could come up here and select a different track to start messing around the EQ with. But I'm going to leave on A1 for now since I think dialogue is going to be a better example of the types of stuff we can do here. Up above that, we have our effect icon. We can drag and drop this into a bin the same way we can effects from the effect editor. Um, once we've got this set up just how we like it, and then we'll be able to drag and drop it directly onto our other audio clips to, you know, drop the same effect on there. We have a play loop button, which will allow us to just play the clip we're working on on a loop in order to preview the effect that we've currently built. Our blood. The organization comes before family. Our blood. The organization comes before family. We have a render effect button. Once you're happy with it, you may want to render. Then our favorite bit, we have the fast menu, which presents us with a bunch of presets that we can add. Now, I will admit that the one I use most frequently here are the telephone EQ A and Bs. So anytime I want a character to sound like they're coming through a microphone, they're coming through, um, you know, somebody's on the phone, or if it's a sound coming through a radio or some kind of microphone in some way, then I'll use one of these. So I've just applied one of those at the moment. Blood. The organization comes before family. And you see, it works pretty well. Now, nowadays, a lot of our phones and devices, the microphones and speakers in them sound a lot better than that. But ho-hum. You know, this is a storytelling medium. We just need to get the point across. And that does it very, very well. So that that is a preset that I do go to quite a lot. But you'll see we also have a number of others here. We have a tape hiss filter. Um, you know, a lot of these are for online, for fixing things. Like NTSC Hum Buster. Um... Uh, music low boost, so you know you're boosting the bass and music. Um, high boost, uh, male voice with presence. Now you'll notice that there isn't necessarily a lot of presets here. Um, you know, th there's not a lot of different effects that you can you know call upon right away from this menu. But just you wait. We are getting to the audio suite in a bit, where there will be far far more options. Now right, before we move on, we've got a little bypass button here. So if I'm playing down the clip. Blood. The organization comes before family. Uh, with our effect on, like that, I can click the bypass anytime. Our blood. In order to hear what it was like before, if I just want to quickly compare the differences that I've made. And, you know, similar to the bypass, we can also completely enable or disable the effect with this button here, which will just cancel out the effect completely. Uh, whereas the bypass is more um, for. Your listening purposes. But that is the audio EQ tool specifically for messing around with the EQ. Now there are other ways to mess around with the EQ in far more detail, but if you're just looking to make some simple quick adjustments or if you just want to make it sound like it's coming through some kind of speaker, this is the tool you go to. 
Right, now next up from that is by far the most common tool um, in any editor's arsenal, the audio mixer. This is the, the very top audio tool under the tools menu, audio mixer, here we go. And it's definitely the most common audio tool used in Avid or I'd wager in any NLE. You know, we have to balance our levels on a regular basis and make sure that everything's working hunky-dory. So let me actually undock this for a second and I'll make it a bit bigger. So we've got our tracks all here. You'll see that if there's no sound on a particular track, there will be no uh, slider. Um, and no um, panning or level information will show. This uh, is actually quite a useful function in the sense that um, if you just part and you can't necessarily even see your timeline, then you know what tracks are active. And if you've named your tracks, you'll get those down here, um, as well as the track number. You can see here I've got A1 to A5 is dialogue, DX for dialogue, A6 to A10 is sound effects, and A11 and 12 are music. And you might also notice as well that my tracks from A7 through to A12 are all stereo tracks. For my sound effects, my music, I prefer to work with stereo tracks. Now, there will be plenty of editors who prefer to work with uh, dual mono. So basically meaning that um, if a clip is stereo, uh, if you've got a stereo music track, um, then you can either import it as one stereo file, it'll take up one stereo track, or you can have it as dual mono, where it'll take up two mono tracks and you can pan one to the left and one to the right. There are advantages and disadvantages to both, and there are very, very strong preferences between editors, which is which. So if you're an assistant editor and you're getting into this now, you know, definitely ask your editor what they would prefer done uh, before you import all their audio as stereo. Uh, I've seen a lot of editors get cheesed off of this. The most entertaining scenario is when you have multiple editors working on the same production, sharing one Avid project, but they like it done two different ways, and they have to use the same bins of music and the same bins of sound effects. That can, that can be interesting. But let's put mono and stereo sound aside for a second since there's a whole heck of a lot I could say about that and that probably deserves its own video to go into. Um, let's have a quick tour around the audio mixer. And also there is a lot I could say here about the audio mixer, but I'm just going to give you the highlights so that you can get started. So our faders here, we can adjust sound up and down. You can click and drag or you can click in the little display at the bottom showing the number of uh, the audio level in dB. and you can just type plus or minus whatever number. So we're at zero right now for this dialogue here. I can go minus 16, enter. There we go. We are now minus 16. That's kind of my preferred way to do it, only because I have a little bit of OCD about decimal point numbers and I don't like them, so I like a round number. So the easiest way to do that is to just type it in rather than trying to drag to an exact number. For each track we have solo and mute buttons just like we have on the timeline. You'll see that as I do these it solos and mutes on the timeline as well since it's just essentially the same control just here. You'll see at the top of each track here we have um, panning information so by default this will all say mid. Now, I'm not quite sure if this will come through in the recording here. But I'm going to pan some audio. This the same line of dialogue from earlier. I'll pan it all the way to the right, like so. Poor blood. The organization comes before family. So I could hear all that just through the right ear cup. And if I throw it to the left, I'll hear it just in the left Poor ear blood. cup. The organization comes before family. And of course we can manipulate this with the keyboard as well. We don't have to just click and drag here in this little green circle. Zero will center in the mid. Typing 100 will go all the way to the right. Minus 100 will go all the way to the left. And any plus number or minus number in between will get us a portion of the way left or right if, if you want to create a more intricate soundscape. So for example, if, a, if someone's calling a character's name and they're off screen camera right, then you could pan that dialogue as they're shouting to the right so the audience is kind of gets the sense that something's coming from over there. This is one of the things that you can do to definitely enhance a soundscape in your edit, um, particularly with dialogue and people talking to each other or explosions. If something sound is coming from a specific direction, this can have as long as there's the right setting and people aren't just watching it on an iPhone or on a laptop, um, if the setting is right, this can definitely have a powerful effect, even in a temp offline mix. But coming away from panning, let's take a look at a few more little features here in the audio mixer before we move on. 
So uh, once I make any kind of changes, like say I bring this down minus 15 dB, you'll notice this gets a lot quieter. Let's make it even quieter than that. I'll just solo it so you can actually hear the difference. Oh, so quiet. Now, after that, making that change, if I right click up here in the middle of this circle, you'll see I have the option to set that level on the track into out. That's because I have marks on the timeline. So if I've marked a certain region of the timeline, say I had marked this region, and then I'm parked in that same clip, then I can apply that minus 35 dB level on that range, that marked range into out. If I'd done any panning, I can also set that panning for that range into out. And if there's also other options in this right click here, I can jump straight to audio settings. Um, I can uh, remove uh, default clip gain, commit clip gain, um, you know, adjust pan controls into out and stuff. But the most common ones you'll be jumping to here are to set the level on the track or the pan on that particular track all the way on it into out. Or if you don't have any marks set, you can do it on the track global. So for that entire track, you'll be able to pan audio left, right, mid, set the level. Uh, this is a particularly useful feature that I've went to all the time if you're looking to make a quick change to a number of shots. So say you're trying to bring all the audio down if it's recorded too loud, or if you're trying to boost the audio of a particular character, you can bump it all up to one track and then, you know, just make the change on one and then set the level on the track global you can make the change really quickly. There is also the option of ganging tracks, meaning we can gang two together. Say I've got two dialogue tracks here on A1 and 2. If I click this button here, you can see it goes green and click this one here. Now those are ganged together and I can manipulate them together. You see if I drag the slider of one, it affects the slider of the other. Again, another good way of batch manipulating audio. Um, so say if I wanted to manipulate all the audio um, on a certain range of A1, one, two, and three, then I can gang those three together, make the change, and then right click on each of them and go set level on track into out or global that way. So there's a number of ways that we can make um, sound manipulations here. Now, one more function that I do want to point out here that is a relatively recent addition. I did talk about it in the uh, What's New video when this was released. Um, I can't remember exactly what version it is, um, but I will have it on screen for you just now. Uh, was the ability to create groups of audio tracks, enabling you to enable and disable them as a group quickly um, all together. Um, and this option is actually hidden away here. You can reveal it by showing the track sidebar with this button up here. So if I click that, then you see I've created groups for dialogue, music, and sound effects. Untitled was the default one. And you create these groups by just enabling, and I created these groups just by enabling a specific set of tracks. So say I've enabled all my dialogue ones there, and then you can just right click in here and go new group from select tracks. And what this enables me to do is, um, you can see my enable tracks here, um, A1 to 5. I can quickly enable and disable a whole group of tracks, um, allowing me to batch manipulate them at once without having to hold shift and click and drag um, or fuss about them here on my timeline. Um, this is particularly useful for when I'm doing sound turnovers. I love this function. Um, not something I've had to do lately, but when I do have to do it, it's really, really great um, because I can quickly make mix downs of the dialogue, the sound effects and the music, and I can batch enable or disable that group um, of sound and audio. Um, it's a very, very useful feature. And we can also color code these groups as well. And you know how much I love color coding. Um, simply by looking at the little color over here next to each group and I can do a little right click and pick out a color. Happy days. And just like we had an audio EQ tool, we also have a few buttons up the top right here which are very similar. We have our fast menu, um, which is more or less the same options we had when we right clicked up here on each track. Uh, we have a render effect button. Uh, we have our audio play loop, same again. And we have a bypass clip gain. If we just want to bypass any changes we've made here to play the clip and sound what the original was like um, in order to fine tune the work we're doing. And lastly, the strip down menu here will allow you to change between stereo 5.1 and 7.1 panning. Um, you'll notice here if I enable 5.1, we get spatial panning here. If you are building a proper 
um, Saron Cern mix. You can technically do that, but it's not something you would ever really have to do an online clip, auto and live. You know, are more or less what they sound like. Um, you know, with live, you can be able to play down the clip and do a live mix. Um, auto will record um, the functions. Auto will record any changes you make and uh, save them. So I would be able to play down a long clip and do a mix up and down and it would be keyframing those sound changes. Um, and clip is you're making changes to the whole clip at any given time. So whether I'm parked at the beginning of the clip or the end of the clip, it's not going to make a difference. It's just going to raise the whole sound level. Whereas auto will, you know, add keyframes and make sound changes. And live, well, that's you doing a live mix as you go. And of course, there are more functions, but I think that's enough for the audio mixer. So let's move on to something else. Righty ho, now, this is where the fun begins. And that is because we have now arrived at the Audio Suite tool. This is the tool where you'll find the majority of audio effects work within Avid Media Composer. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff here. I haven't even explored a fraction of it um, in all my years in post because, as I say, I only come into stuff um, as I need it. I learn something sort of as needed and then next time I need to do that thing I know how to do it. It's not something I've necessarily always needed but there are plenty of people that I work beside who are, use the tool all the time for all different purposes but I do use it sometimes. So to start with it might look really basic here in the sense that we have our audio effect icon that we can drag and drop into a bin. We have our same audio loop play, our same render effect and our same um, you know fast menu here. Very similar to what we had in the um, audio EQ tool. We also have the track that we can select that we are manipulating. So I'll go to that same bit of dialogue. I'll select A1 and we can select the drive that we're going to render to. I'm going to select my RAID here. But from here is where we really get into the fun of it. So this drop down menu here um, is not all the different unique effects, but the different tools um, within uh, the audio suite. Uh, it used to be called the RTAS tool. Now I think it's just generally referred to as the audio suite. Um, and these are all our different tools by which we can, you know, play around with sound. Um, so we have you know, reversing, we have time compression and expansion. So if you want to manipulate time of the audio in any way, that'll be the one you want to use. Um, we've got sci-fi tools. We've got lots of compressors and limiters if you want to limit a specific um, set dB and then it won't be able to go any higher. And we have all different kinds of EQs that we can play with. So I'll go there first since that's really simple. So I've selected my EQ band and then I'm going to click this um, icon here and it's going to activate that plugin. So here we go. And now we're just confronted by a whole load of knobs. Just lots and lots and lots of knobs. Now we don't have to just use the uh, knobs down here for particular control. Um, we can use, um, we can manipulate this in a visual way on this graph right here. So I'm going to like just bring everything down just to make a drastic change so this is quite clear. Draw our EQs right down. And then we have a little preview button up here. Organization comes before family. Which allows us to preview the effect that we're doing at any given point. But bear in mind that a lot of the effects that you're doing in the audio suite you will have to render before it will play live on your timeline. Um, and I don't worry, audio effects are very, very, very fast to render and we can render them right here um, in the audio suite tool um, as soon as we're done. So if you're just previewing every now and again, once you've got it to the point that you're happy with, just hit render before you leave here. And the level of customization within these tools doesn't just um, end at all the con many controls that we have here. We've also got a drop down menu up here where we can save these settings um, and call them up at any given time. Uh, we have, you know, settings unique to each individual audio suite plugin. In terms of playing with EQ within Avid, you can do anything you want. You can explore to any level that you want to, depending on how deep you want to go. The functionality is definitely there. But stepping away from EQ for a second, I'm just going to cancel this. Let's take a look at some of the other audio suite plugins and tools. So say I wanted to add a bit of an echo, some reverb. Then that would mean I would go to this deverb option here. Then I'll click my activate plugin option. And again, we're confronted with some knobs that we can use to make precise controls. 
but if you look up here, we've also got options for a hall, like a large hall or a church, um, different rooms or ambiences. Um, and these are presets that we can apply. So if I preview this, Ooh. So that's the church preset. So that's really, really boomy. I think that's quite a, a large church. Um, if we go to our drop down menu here, let's see what else we've got. We've got large halls, short plates. What does a short plate sound like? But as you can see, we've got all kinds of different um, presets here for different levels of reverb and boom um, that you can add to your sound. Um, so if you want any kind of echo um, or reverb on, you know, whether it's music or whether it's dialogue, whatever you need to add to. And I love me some presets. I'm for presets all day long. You know, I'm not looking to necessarily get all customizey and tinkery. You know, my point is that I might want some echoey, you know, reverb on there in order to tell a story point. Everything always comes back to story and storytelling. For me, because there's that many different presets available there, um, I don't necessarily find the, the controls, all the different unique knobs and the customization to be that much useful to me. You know, that many different presets will be more than enough for me all day long, every day. But let's look at another one. I've jumped to the sci-fi audio suite tool here and let's see what alien talk sounds like. Oh. Oh, I don't think that's what it sounded like when E.T. phoned home, but you know, and don't forget if once you've got this customized and, and you've found an effect that you think um, is really useful and you're going to use a lot in your project, just drag and drop this effect icon into a bin uh, for future use. And then you can simply drag and drop it onto any audio clip you like. So I'll drop onto this bit of dialogue here. And don't forget, you will have to render it before it will play most likely. But as you can see, audio clips render really fast. And then, and there you have it. Now you have our uh, alien IRA enforcer killing machine. Mm. Now I don't really have time to show you all of these. I'd, I strongly encourage you to have a play around with them when you have time. Now definitely if you want to manipulate your audio in any way, this is where you're going to come to do it. And there are plugins that you can download as well. Um, a whole load of them. You'll see them on the Avid Marketplace and, and elsewhere as well um, to enhance the audio suite uh, and, and enable you to do all kinds of different things. I've never bothered because I found enough of a functionality here for myself. Um, particularly the Tim Compression Expansion is one that I've used quite a bit where I can slow down or speed up some sound. So say if I go to the ratio here, if I... Put this to 0.5, so so roughly half it. And then I'll hit render. The organization comes before family. You name the score. Just under the gosh. You can see it's now playing at double speed. Whereas if I put my ratio to two, so I've doubled it, it's going to play at half speed. Our blood. Darkness. You knew the score. Unfortunately, there's no way within Avid to um, say double the speed of a clip and have it apply to the video and the audio at the same time. You will have to use the time warp effect, say 200%. And if you want the audio to also go and concert with it and double in speed, you'll have to use a tool like this um, and apply the same maths to it um, in order to get it to match. Um, this isn't something I've really had to do much, maybe once or twice. Sometimes we'll do this to cheat, just to make some audio fill a certain length. If we just need it to be a little bit longer and continue on, you can slow it down just slightly. Um, and, you know, nobody's really going to notice, but you can only really get away with that in margins of about 10%. So I wouldn't get too many ideas about stretching out your sound. Now, you know, you'll notice that whenever I've uh, applied anything in the audio suite here, it's applied to the clip that I've got highlighted um, on the uppermost track. The same as I explained earlier for the audio EQ tool. Now that is one way to go about it, to do it on a clip by clip basis. We can save the effect and then we can drag it onto any other clips that we want. But if there's an effect that you're using a lot, so say, say like reverb, another approach that I've seen done quite often is to have a reverb track. So if you're gonna be having reverb quite often in your story, then you can apply what's called an audio track effect. These you can apply in a multitude of different ways. You can go tools, audio track effect. 
And from there, you can choose your plugin. Say you want some D-verb on there and it's going on to A1 because that's what I've got selected here, but I can select any which track that I want. Um, I'll leave it on A1 for now. And then if I play A1 up here, you'll be able to hear and notice that um, that D-verb has been applied to all the sound across A1. And you'll also notice here that in the track control panel, if you're not seeing all these controls here, by the way, just go to the fast menu at the bottom of your timeline and enable track control panel. That, that's how you toggle it on and off there. I always have it on at all times, um, ever since it debuted. Um, it is really, really useful. Um, but you'll notice in your track control panel right here that um, in, in these little squares next to each track, um, that one of them has now been filled. So it's, it's showing that D minus, so the D verb has been applied. Um, each one of these little squares represents a slot where you can have track wide effects. And you can just click directly in one of them to start applying an audio track effect. You don't need to go through the tools menu. This is how I would most often do it. Because if you do it this way, it's also automatically selecting the track that you had clicked in. So say I just want it to apply to A10, I can click in one of the squares in A10. It's already selected A10, and then I can start configuring. So it's just a faster way to get to it. And if you want to remove any of these track wide effects anytime, you simply click into them and then go to the menu up here and turn change it to no insert. So you're just undoing that track wide effect. And then your sound is back to normal. Now, like I said, I have seen this done quite a few times by editors. Uh, it's usually for adding D-verb. There's a scene, say, in an echoey place. You know, they don't want to be regularly, you know, applying that same effect to different clips or even batch applying them because if they want, want to swap out takes, they'll just have a track, usually along the bottom or something, um, an effects track where they have that applied track wide and then any audio they put on there will just, you know, have that D-verb on it. And you'll notice that I didn't have to render that either. It's just playing that effect on top of the audio. And it's almost like it's applying on the output as the sound comes from that track towards your um, audio out from the Avid. Um, the, the effect is added at that stage. Um, so there's no rendering necessary um, for this one. Now, another tool to mention here is called the Audio Punch-In tool. And this is essentially audio recording within Avid on your timeline. So if I go Tools, Audio Punch-In, we got this window right here uh, where we can choose our microphone. So mine by default would be my Wavelink microphone that I'm using now. That's what I'm using to record this. And I don't know what's going to happen if I, you know, duplicate that up right now. So I'm just going to select my pro microphone um, and then choose my source. Um, you know, one channel. So this microphone's got one channel. I'm recording onto my RAID. It's going in my lock cut bin. That's the only bin I've got open. And I'm going to record onto, say, A2. And we can also use this little arrow up here to bring up um, leveling and meters. And, and this tool I mostly just use if, say, I'm looking to uh, record some, you know, quick temp ADR or do some temp lines that they're going to do a pickup of later. Um, you know, we'll quite often add those in. You'll see, you'll find the editors have played the roles of, you know, a lot of the characters in the different films they've cut at one point or another when uh, the lines haven't been recorded um, or they're going to ADR for whatever reason that's not legible, whatever. Um, you know, we'll do the temp records uh, quite often. You know, any character at all. I've done all kinds of people. But yeah, getting back to the tool, it's really, really simple to use. Uh, we simply set our pre and post. So I'm going to say a second there. Um, say if you're wanting to record this line here. Haven't we been through enough? Haven't we been through enough? I will mark into out there. Um, I've said I want to record onto A2. And then I'll just go record. Haven't, Haven't we been, been through, through enough? enough? Haven't, Haven't we been, been through enough? enough? And you can see it jump back one second before my mark in point. And then you can hear um, 
the the line that's being said as you say it so that you can try and mimic the timing of it if that's what you're looking to do uh, you don't necessarily have to work it that way you can just record without marks and then it'll record directly onto your timeline and then you can place it however you want You'll notice that it didn't record here on this timeline. I think that's because my computer is already currently doing a recording and it doesn't really want to uh, let me do both at the same time, you know, which is fair enough. But that more or less covers our suite of audio tools, actually. We've sort of went through all the bare essentials anyway. I know there'll be a lot of seasoned Avid editors who might have watched this video. Congratulations if you got this far, if you are, who, you know, could be kicking and screaming looking at the screen right now. Um of all the stuff that I've glossed over because there is a lot that I have glossed over. But if I was to talk about everything that you could do in sound, uh, we really would be here all night. And I definitely don't have the time for that. Um, but before we go though, I do want to speak about the audio workspace setup. So you'll notice here that um, I've chosen to go with a single um, monitor. I've went to Composer, show single monitor um, to make it into a single one there. And I've squished it right up into the corner um, you know, so it's not taking up too much space. Generally, I would also have a timeline view um, for this function as well, um, whereby I would make all of my um, video tracks very small and then make my audio tracks a little larger. Um, generally, I would have multiple monitors as well. This is quite a crude setup because I'm trying to squish it onto um, a MacBook Pro screen. And then I'll, I'm, I generally wouldn't be showing my bins as well. I would just have this all taken up with sound tools. And this is because I'll, I can be cutting, cutting away in my edit workspace, doing effects in my effects workspace. Um, but what I jump into my audio workspace for is to properly um, tinker with the sound. And it's generally, you know, once I've done a full pass of the edit, and then I want to go back through and do a sound pass. I want to do a mix, adjust the levels, um, maybe apply some effects here and there. Uh, I know I'm going to be spending a significant amount of time in sound specifically, um, and so I've got it set up just for that. I do have a viewer here. Um, I do have a viewer here where I can see picture, I can do my playback. Since when do bank managers need to take... But this doesn't need to be very large, it's just kind of taking up space. Especially since I do also have a client monitor here, I have a 28 inch TV um, to the right of my second monitor which will display my full screen output. So if I need to see it larger, I'll look over there. The rest of my space, I do really want to be my sound tools, I want these to be taking up as much space as possible. But yeah, I think that covers us for this video, guys. That's currently sitting at well over an hour and 20 minutes. I somehow need to find time this week to cut down, so yay. But thank you very much if you've made it this far and watched through the video. I do really appreciate it every time I see anybody's viewed any of these videos. It's it's awesome. It's really exciting. A especially big thank you to the Patreon followers and the new YouTube members as well. There will be some more uh, exclusive content coming their way very shortly. I've planned out about the next four videos, both the exclusives and uh, the main YouTube channel so stay tuned for that but yeah I will see you in the next video uh, until then though I really need to go get cutting this one so see you later